in a world ravaged by violence, racism, disease, famine, and LMFAO. And sublime, the Bloomington Comedy Festival stands alone as the last bastion of hope for mankind. But it almost wasn't meant to be. In fact, if not for comedian Brandon, it might never have been at all. Hey, comedian Brandon, it's May 2009. I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to see what things Barack Obama has in store for our country. Yeah, man, totally. Couldn't agree more. Turning to sports, I really think that Kelvin Sampson's got us headed in the right direction. Me too, man. Me too. Speaking of sports, how about that Tiger Woods, huh? You know, he's unbeatable, and also... He's remained faithful to his wife all this time. Yeah, man. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You know, I was thinking, comedian Brandon, I don't think I'm going to have an open mic over the summer. I don't know, Jared. I think what you could do is you could have like a... You could make it a competition, you know what I mean? You could like have comedians like go against each other and like... In like a competition, but with comedy. You know what I'm saying? Jared? That sounds pretty good, comedian Brandon. Do you think that I could make a weird trophy? I think that's an alright idea, man. I think it's, I mean, it's kind of my idea, you know, because the original thing was mine. But you can, yeah, you can do something with that. And maybe down the road you could do some kind of festival across multiple rooms, you know, and bring in like national headliners and everything. You mean like maybe we could do it at the Buzzkirk Chumley Theater and the Bishop, which, which isn't open yet, and the Back Door, which isn't open yet, and maybe the Waldron Art Center, which changed its name? Yeah, man. I think you're on to something, which means I'm on to something. I don't know, Comedian Brandon. I think that if I ever do something like that, I'm going to say it was my idea. Oh, well, you have fun with that. I don't know if you can pull it off. I could, but I don't think you can. (laughs) What do you think about this, Max? The first Bloomington Comedy Festival was a total success, but it was creating the trophy that had Jared's interest peaked. In fact, the whole point of this video was to dramatize each trophy saving the winner's life in some way. Which is such a stupid idea that we're just going to show the rest of the video now and it really makes no sense. Hi guys, I am Tom Brady and I'm the winner of the first annual Bloomington Comedy Festival. Hi, I'm Joshua Murphy and you might remember me from such things as winning the second annual Bloomington Comedy Festival. Hi, uh, I'm Jameson Raymond. I was the winner of the fourth annual Bloomington Comedy Festival. I'm John Hancock. Uh, I won the fifth annual Bloomington Comedy Festival. I also punched Jameson Raymond in the stomach once. But that's a story for another time. Time, like right now. I punched him in the stomach because he tried to date my wife. Now he's dead or in Kansas or the same, same thing actually. Uh, I'm in Kansas now because I'm an idiot. Turkey. I was no Tom Brady. That smug son of a bitch. I have two trophies. Did I mention that? I won the I won the best whole fight twice. Um that's actually Tom's what Tom's hair looked like when I met him though. And then he got dumped and uh-huh. hey, one time This trophy can't just do all that. It can do more things. Like one time, my car broke down, and I just jumped in this van for a ride. But I want to talk to you about Bernie, my trophy. Bernie and I met years before the festival. He was employed at uh, Macy's uh, in a window. 
and I was uh, the designer of the windows. And we sort of had a thing going on, and it turns out that in a previous life, uh, he made an Egyptian magician upset, uh, and so he was cursed to come to life whenever he and I were working together at night, and then would turn back into a mannequin during the day. It was late one night, some thugs out looking for drugs, I can only imagine, rampaging through the neighborhood when they broke in. And a uh, scuffle ensues, and Bernie, having some leftovers from the Egyptian magic, springs to life, wrestles the gun out of the junkie's hands, and uh, saves my life. Unfortunately, in the struggle, shots were fired, Bernie was maimed, fatally, uh, and as we all sat there, he, I held his head in my arms as he passed. In 2014, Bloomington Comedy Festival contestant Kay Daniel openly mocked the greatness of the trophies from the festival's past. Coincidentally, Kay mysteriously disappeared that same evening. Her demise cannot be confirmed, which is why there's a question mark on the screen right now. These trophies uh, are worth more than we could ever imagine. I found that out the hard way when uh, I moved to Chicago and uh, was carrying my trophy around like I do uh, to show people that I'm a winner. And uh, I was struck by a gypsy curse. They're just floating around the air here in uh, Greek Town in uh, Chicago. Uh, one of the one of the terrible gypsy curses hit me, and uh, me and my trophy traded bodies. You've heard this tale, it's as old as time. I was worried, obviously, because I'm a man, and uh, this trophy, a uh, mere pizza box uh, with a wooden base. I said, how could that trophy possibly pr perform the duties of a human man? I was wrong. The trophy uh, was able to hold up my life uh, just as well as I did. Some, In some cases, better. Kind of worked out for the best in the end. I got a promotion at work, and uh, things are looking up. Uh, so, believe in yourselves. And uh, good luck winning that trophy, guys. Thanks. So this is the trophy that I won. Uh, I, I think it's by far the best of the five trophies that they put together. They actually used some of Father Kurt Messick's beard hair, um, but I don't know, it seems like quite a bit. So I, I didn't want to do the festival again. I, I felt like winning it last year, that was a good place to, to go out. But Jared like insisted on it. I found out he was like using my picture to like advertise the fest and was like promising people I was going to be there. So I just, you know, I, I, I sucked it up and did it. But it, it was obvious that uh, I wasn't as funny as I thought. After a lackluster performance in round two, John was notified that an audience member was accusing him of repeating material from round one. Already stressed with a hole in his roof, a $300 a day cocaine habit, and three young children, John made plans to burn this customer's house to the ground. So the pressure of trying to repeat just, it, it got to me and I just ended up snapping. Uh, so I just I left the house, I took the trophy with me like I always do and I went over to the, to his place and, and I set it on fire. Then I took some of Father Kurt's beard hair and uh, sprinkled it on the ground. I, I don't think Father Kurt knows yet. <laughs> 